Unless, of course, you're watching this video in the evening. In that case, good evening, and you are watching Time Travel TV. And today, we are going to be talking about the Siege of Khartoum in 1884 to 1885. So, it is the 1880s. And Egypt and Sudan are still technically part of the Ottoman Empire, except, in reality, they are more like British protectorates. So now, not everybody was happy with this arrangement, mainly the Egyptians and the Sudanese. Under the rule of the Ottomans, they had enjoyed a certain amount of autonomy, which changed when the British came along. Now, dissent for the British grew over time, and in especially with one person. This was Mohammed Ahmed, who was a Sudanese chap, and he claimed that he was the Mahdi, who was the prophesied Islamic Messiah, who would come and rule the world and bring peace. He decided to set about on a anti-British campaign and gathered followers to do so. My Lord Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, commands me to speak, for I am the Mahdi. The expected one, and I am sprung from the forehead of the family of my Lord Muhammad, blessings be upon him. Muhammad Ahmed got a lot of support and was able to win some major victories over the British. With the captured weapons from the British soldiers, he was able to arm his own army. And off the back of these victories, he was able to occupy a majority of the Sudan. The British did not take these threats seriously at first. After all, Sudan didn't have many natural resources. There wasn't much there for the British to have. Except Britain's international prestige was taking somewhat of a hit, so they decided to sort the situation out once and for all. Well, that was the plan anyway. They sent General Gordon to Khartoum, where they would pool their army together in order to form a counter-attack against Mohammed Ahmed. Except when the British sent 7,000 Egyptian soldiers who were fighting for them to Khartoum, Muhammad Ahmed took note and t sent 50,000 of his own men after them. The siege of Khartoum started in 1884, and the British had made some provisions, for instance creating barricades around the outside of the city wall, and stockpiling enough food for what they thought would be the duration of the siege. Now, the British expected support for Mohammed Ahmed's uh, campaign to dwindle, but after 10 months this wasn't looking so likely. And combined with the fact that Mohammed Ahmed had got word that a British relief force under the command of General Worsley was on its way, he decided now was the opportunity for his attack. The first attack came at about midnight on the 26th of January 1885, and this first attack was pushed back, but it was not the last. Many more waves of troops came attacking the city. Many of them were killed by heavy gunfire from the city and landmines, but eventually, at about three o'clock-ish, they pushed through and broke in to the city. <laughs> The Mahdi's men stormed the city, and the defenders fought as well as they could, but due to the fact that the enemy was so numerous, they simply did not have a chance. <laughs> The city's garrison fought to the last man. By the end of the day, not a single one, including Gordon, survived. Now, nobody really knows exactly what happened to General Gordon, but legend has it he stood at the top of the palace steps, looking down straight at the attackers. <laughs> Thank you.
We'll never know exactly what happened on the steps of the palace in Khartoum in 1885, but one thing is for sure, I sincerely doubt it happened exactly how it did in that film. That was probably more what the British press wanted to talk about, because that was a bit better than saying all their men had been slaughtered. So this was a really big humiliation for the British, but equally as important, it was a really big victory, an important victory for the Mahdi and his men. They were rejoicing. <laughs> In total, all 7,000 British and Egyptian soldiers died during the battle. We don't know how many uh, of the Mahdi's men died, but it's estimated that they had quite heavy losses. Around 4,000 civilians died during the battle. This was a very important victory for the Mahdi and his men. The Mahdi set up his own religious state, Mahdist Sudan, which ruled over much of what is modern Sudan. What the British were absolutely humiliated. What started off as a minor, insignificant little annoyance had turned into the British losing control of the situation in Sudan. Although, once the British had got over the initial shock, they returned ten years later for the reconquest of Sudan. But you can learn more about that in my other video, The Battle of Ombudsman. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to Time Travel TV, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!